Hi, welcome to learnhowtogarden.com. In today's episode on the 10 Minute Gardener, we'll be talking about the jobs and things we can do and the things we can plant in October. If you're not already subscribed to us at Learn How to Garden, there's a link directly below this film. Click on that, input your email address, and it means every single time we put up a new film, we can let you know. It also means you get access to our in-depth free monthly newsletter. I'm sitting in my fruit garden. We only created this fruit garden nine months ago and it's been incredibly successful. And the reason I'm here is it's the time of year that if you want to plant fruit, whether soft fruit like raspberries or loganberries, tayberries, or whether it's things like black currants, red currants or trees, it's a great time to order them now. You'll get the best selection if you order early. And for things like red currants, black currants, gooseberries, if you actually have got them, in our newsletter this month I'll be showing you how to do hardwood cuttings so you can propagate your own. So once you've got one of those it means you can continue it continuously even get more plants of your own. But what you can see in front of me um, is sort of what October is all about, isn't it? It's the sort of it's that crossover season. We've got pumpkins that are starting to come in, but we've also got sweet corn we're harvesting. We've got apples that we're going to be using to make cider and cider vinegar, but we're still cropping courgettes. It's the perfect time of year to be planting overwintering onion sets, and they're basically these little things. They're baby onions. And these go in the ground now, and what you're going to get are these. These are grown from these sets. So these go in the ground now and they'll be producing these for you next year. The other ones that you need to be thinking about are garlic. Now this is um, Picardy White, it's my absolute favourite, nice big cloves and they'll arrive looking like this and garlic needs two things. It needs some coal to get it to split into the individual cloves but you don't want to break it all up really um, before you're going to sow it. So leave them in these cloves and only break it up as you're going to sow it. If you're not a great fan of garlic, I would suggest growing something called elephant garlic. And elephant garlic will be three times bigger than this. There's a film on Learn How to Garden about elephant garlic. And elephant garlic, garlic for those people who don't like garlic. In fact, it's related to leeks rather than garlic. And you roast the bulbs whole and they're about as big as one of these apples. And they have a real mild taste to them and they're fantastic with those roasts in the winter. So elephant garlic, another thing that can go in at this time of the year. The classics for this time of year are broad beans and peas. Uh, sugar snap peas can go in as well. And if you think mm, it seems a bit cold for peas, remember we all plant our sweet peas in the autumn and it's the same family. So peas are great now. Go onto the website of your, you know, the seed company you use, and I really do recommend Seeds of Italy for this. And the reason I recommend Seeds of Italy for planting in the autumn is that about four fifths of Italy is subalpine, it's really cold. One of their lettuces will actually grow at minus 35 plus degrees, which is much colder than most of us will get in the northern hemisphere. And they've also got a chicory that will get through the winter, and I'll put the names of those underneath the film but they're, they're good for sort of vegetables to get you through the winter. Also a great time for planting spinach and rocket. Um, the biggest problem most people have with spinach and rocket is they go to seed, they bolt really quickly and this is a great time to grow them and if you can give them a tiny bit of protection either with a cloche or inside a cold greenhouse they'll be more than happy. And land cress is another one. Land cress is a great substitute for watercress. One of the easiest soups you can make um, is a cream and watercress soup, but you can use land cress and it gives you exactly the same flavour. So, it, and again, a great one to get out there. Parsley, also, I tend to still try and get a sowing of parsley in about this time of the year. And if you want to increase, um, the productivity of your veg garden. One of the things you can think about saying this time of the year are some hardy annuals. These are from Higgledy Garden. And what hardy annual flowers do is they attract those pollinators that we need. And the more pollinators we can get into the garden, the better. And there is a collection of autumn sown annuals that you can plant just about now. What we're talking about seeds, behind me what you can see are sunflowers that have gone to seed and they're being left there very specifically to feed birds through the winter. The more wildlife we can attract the better our gardens will be. 
For two reasons. One, the pollinators will give us bigger crops. And two, a lot of the other wildlife that we can attract, whether it's the insect-eating birds or the seed-eating birds, they'll have a go at the pests that we are bound to get next year. And one of the big jobs for me in the autumn is collecting leaves. Leaf mould is a fantastic thing to have in your garden, and there is a film about leaf mould that'll learn how to garden. But while you're collecting leaves, think about making a hedgehog house. Now, there are plants at the Hedgehog Society. They're basically like a little cave that you make uh, that the hedgehog can get inside, but you cover them with leaves to keep them warm. And a hedgehog will be one of your biggest allies in your battle against slugs. So think about building a hedgehog house to get that into your garden. You can also, at this time of the year, think about saving some of your own seeds. And I've got a couple here. These are Borlotti beans. And these are being grown to dry. So if we open him up, we get these wonderful pod of beans in here. And I'll dry these very gently for use in my casserole through the winter. But you can keep some of these beans and sow them next year. So once you've bought some beans, you don't need to buy them again. They won't cross-pollinate um, that easily. So they are the sort of thing that's worth investing in. And it's the same as these little things here. These are nasturtium seeds. Now, I've grown nasturtiums, which are the orange flowers. They make a great addition to your salads. But in the newsletter this month, we're going to be talking about what to do with all these nasturtium seeds because there's something um, about them that's really quite special. As well as seeds, there are a few plants that if you haven't got them in, you can. You, artichokes, you can actually um, sow globe artichokes now, overwinter them and get them in next year, which is a perennial vegetable. And if you're growing perennial veg, that would be asparagus or sea kale. If you don't already grow it, you need to prepare the bed. Look at the film for growing asparagus at Learn How to Garden. If you're already growing it, you need to get rid of all the foliage from that asparagus and prepare it for next year. And it's also a great time of the year for getting your rhubarb planted. And last but not least, the autumn is great for foraging. These are wild damsons picked from the hedgerows. And they're fantastic for damson vodka. Uh, again, there's recipes on the website. Sloes, which are the actual fruit um, of the blackthorn, fantastic for slow gin. So remember that it's not just things you grow that you can get, but you can get out there and forage at this time of the year. And last but not least, although I don't talk about it a lot of the time, lawns. If you want a fantastic lawn, autumn is the perfect time to start your lawn care regime. You need to kill your moss. That's the first thing. If you don't kill your moss, trying to rake your moss out will give you more problems than um, solving. And then you need to actually make sure that you've got good drainage in your lawn. And that would involve slitting it with a slit tine aerator or using a holotine aerator. And it's also good for getting rid of weeds in your lawn. And for that, you'll need a specific weed killer that just deals with weeds, not grass. Um, and if you use weed killers in your garden, it's also a good time of the year for spraying those perennial weeds because the actual weed killer will be taken down into the roots and come the spring, they're not going to be there to get a head start on all of your spring sowing. And last but not least, I just wanted to share these with you. A lot of people have never seen these. These are meddlers. It's a very strange little um, fruit. <clears throat> and what's even stranger about it is you don't actually do anything with meddlers until they are very soft. Uh, and people say they're rotting, but they're not rotting. They just go soft uh, and it's a bit like hanging meat. They need to actually um, mature off the tree. And we call it bleating. And uh, it's a fantastic um, little thing to grow. If you come across meddlers, they make a great jelly. Uh, and I just thought I'd show you share them with you. Again, it's not something we often see in our uh, local supermarket. So that's the things you can be getting on with, the things you can be planting. Uh, it's a great time of the year. Don't feel that, <coughs> you know, there's nothing you can be doing. There's lots to be done in the garden. We'll be coming up to Halloween. Remember, every time you use a squash, uh, and when you harvest your squash, leave this on. You know, you need that so that it doesn't rot. You need that sort of couple of inches of stem. Every time you use one, take the seeds, 
put them on a tray uh, with a bit of sea salt, tiny bit of chilli flakes, pop them in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes and you'll have a really great simple snack. Thanks for watching Learn How to Garden. Uh, if you are subscribed to us, we'll be covering what to do with these nasturtium seeds in the newsletter.